What's going on? It's me, Jerupidus, and I hope that you're having a great day because I know I am. It's Friday, and I'm playing Final Fantasy. So the first thing we're going to do is go right ahead and exit out of here because... Uh, let's check this out. Uh, we have a few pieces of armor to sell, and we're going to need some open slots to finish raiding the floating castle. So why don't we make a trip back to town real quick and do that? And I'm actually going to head to Crescent Lake because there is a black spell that I want to buy there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab a Power Word spell. But why don't we go ahead and sell that stuff first? Get rid of our Opal Shield and our Opal Armor. That's worth quite a bit of money, isn't it? And I am not very likely to ever cast Stun. But it is a Power Word spell, and I think it's pretty cool, so we're going to go ahead and grab it. And that's going to complete our level 6 spell book, I do believe, for Doc and for Wilbo. And then I have a few level 7 spells to buy, but those are going to be in Gaia. So why don't we go ahead and run over there. And believe it or not, the world is round, so we can just head straight up and get there. Here we go. Oh, no, you know what? I want to go to Onrak. That's where we're going. Ooh, Skittle levels up. That's nice. And so do I. And Doc, is it going to be everybody? Not quite. Now, there are some spells that I want to buy in Gaia. Um, but those are going to be level 8, and we don't actually have that much money. Like, 177,000 gil is not a small amount of money. Um, but we still can't cast level 8 spells for maybe another level. Might be two, but I think it's just one. But either way, I'm going to stick to filling out the spell books of things that I can actually cast. So let's get over to Onrak. I think a Frost Gator's new. But these water creatures are no match for our Zeus equipment. I guess Thor is not Zeus, but you, you, you know what I'm saying. And anyway, a few random battles never hurt anyone. And I did just notice that I'm still holding Doc's Silver Hammer, so I definitely want to get rid of that. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do that here, but we will be able to pick up the spells we want. So for black, I'm going to want blind. That's another uh, power word spell that I'm never going to cast, but saber doesn't work, so it's our only option. And then for Doc, we're going to grab both of these. And that leaves a little bit of money left over for um, me and Skittle to fill out our spell books, which I definitely want to do as well. But for right now, um, we're going to focus on finishing level 8, because that's going to be the most expensive. The rest of them are going to be pretty cheap. 
and we're gonna be fairly rich by the time we leave the uh, floating castle, as usual. Once you finish a dungeon dive, you're usually in pretty good shape money-wise. But with that out of the way, we're gonna run back to uh, Gaia, I suppose. It's right nearby. Uh, hit the inn, and then we're ready to head back to the Mirage Tower. And we can finally, then, take on the Floating Castle and get rid of their uh, flying dragon infestation. <laughs> it is like a space station, right? So you'd assume they've got an IT guy. And the IT guy was probably like, oh, you know what, here's your problem. You have a uh, gigantic dragon in here. And honestly, I don't get paid enough to deal with that. So I'm gonna sell that silver hammer and then we're gonna hit the inn and then we'll be ready to go. Perhaps not exactly in that order. And let's make sure we're not holding any other extraneous weapons. We are. There's an extra ice sword and the Vorpal. Ooh, we can make some money right now. Let's do it. And yeah, so you can see there how good the Vorpal was supposed to be. It's It even costs... Uh, it sells for more money than the Sun Sword, but it is just worse, unfortunately. Yep, and I want to hold on to that Light Axe, so I think we're good. Let's just double check. Yep, just a bunch of Uniques, and then we have two open slots. Now... I did my best to not drop anything for the uh, Mirage Tower, but for the Floating Castle, we are going to have to, because we're just running out of space for armor. So, without... I, I don't want to do these dungeons, like, five times and, you know, really maximize my value and sell everything. Certainly you could. Ooh, a Tyro. This is new. He's one of the strongest random enemies in the game. He has a huge number of HP and hits really hard. So we're going to go ahead and just use our damage items to start. And see how that does. Wow. <laughs> and Skittle one-shots him. Okay. Okay, Skittle. You're a bit of a maniac, but that's okay with me. And fortunately, at least for this first floor, there's a handy-dandy little shortcut right here. Bam, let's go to the second floor. <laughs> All right, just got to pop through here. This one, unfortunately, does not have a shortcut, so... But it's no big deal, we will get there very soon. And we're ready to take that transporter again. But first, we gotta fight this blue D. And we definitely resist lightning pretty well, but I'm just gonna throw down an A-Lit anyway, which I kind of forgot to do in this first battle. We did kill him pretty quickly, but his thunder attack is definitely dangerous. And let's just throw a fast up on Skittle. Frighteningly, we can cast it six times now. And I'm glad that Doc got to go before him. I think the only person missing lightning resistance is me. Wow, 121 damage on Wilbo. Nevertheless, uh, we're just gonna make sure that Thunder doesn't completely wreck us, but yeah, there he goes. Fast is so good. I know I've said it already, but the fact that you were supposed to be able to do things like cast Saber and Fast on the same character is so ridiculous.
I did definitely take fewer heal potions than I maybe should have, but I think we're gonna be just fine. Maybe even not enough pure potions, too. That is mildly concerning, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'll tell you this much, I don't plan on turning back, so we're just gonna make this work. Okay, we are finally back to where we started the episode, in the floating castle. Now there's gonna be a lot of exciting treasure in here, and the most exciting one I'm gonna go get first. And I love that they made different treasure box assets to make them look more like space station-y treasure boxes, so let's check this out. This is the Bane Sword. Now, you may be looking at the stats right now and thinking, that sword isn't very good. And you would be correct, it is not a very good weapon to equip. However, it does cast the spell Bane. And... Who do I want to give that to? I suppose I want to give it to my ninja. That would be me. Uh, because I feel like a cloud of poison gas is something that a ninja would have, you know? Like, some kind of smoke bomb type deal. <laughs> So we will definitely be hanging on to that sword, and actually for a very good reason, not just because it's fun, uh, but we'll see that uh, very soon. Ooh, I'm gonna leave this in even though we've seen this before, because this is that moment where you realize, oh my god, boss monsters are just regular monsters in here, huh? And they sure are, but the eye is very wimpy, and we all resist death. So something like uh, Quad X, despite the fact that Wilbo has less than 300 HP, just isn't going to work. So those aren't scary at all, and they do give us a very nice reward. And there's going to be just an absolute massive amount of treasure in this floor, so let's get right to it. 7,900 gil. 4,000. A heal potion. And 9,900. And I did tell you we were going to be rich. And it is worth noting, uh, I do not believe we've seen manticores before, although we conceivably could have by this point in the game. Uh, but they're your standard heavies. Nothing too special. I believe they have an attack that can poison your whole party, but I might be wrong about that. Either way, they're going to go down pretty quickly here. I believe that's it right there. The stinger. And it did absolutely nothing. And I don't mind that at all. They did manage to get me with that one, which is unfortunate. Alright, that's the end of the Manticores. And I'm starting to be very glad that I bought that pure spell. How many of those do I have? Six of them? Okay, that helps. That makes me feel better. Not that at this point we couldn't pretty much just survive while poisoned, but it, I, I would rather fix it and not have to listen to that sound. That would be the worst. That's infinitely worse than losing one HP per step. Ooh, Grey Nagas are new. These are spellcasters. They have a bunch of spells, but unfortunately for the Naga, none of them are good. <laughs> and Roos is definitely annoying. But, uh, we have way too much hit percentage for that to really bother us. And the other part of that is, is that if the Naga spends its turn doing that, it's not hitting us, so... Fairly unproductive as far as, uh, actions an enemy could take go. 
Oh, and I guess I should say none of these are going to be trapped. I would talk about them if they were. Another heal helmet. That is, uh, not going to be useful. Um, so here's the thing. I can wear it for now, but it's not gonna last. But I suppose I'll put it on since I have nothing better to do. And there's a pro ring. We are gonna have to drop that, unfortunately. Um, because everyone is wearing one, and while it does sell for a lot of money, we still need space, so that's gonna have to go. Alright, we already checked that one. And 5,000 gil. And it's time to move on to the next floor, which is gonna be, if you can believe this, an even larger treasure room. Ooh, Medusas are new. At least these gray Medusas. Or greater Medusas, if you prefer. Fortunately for me, they are weak to fire, so the Mage Staff is gonna be unbelievable. Alright, well, two of those were misses, so that's... <laughs> Maybe I talked it up too much. The Mage Staff got a little bit of stage fright there. Jeez. Skittle can really just drop some pain right now. It's unbelievable. Look at that. And he doesn't even have his best sword yet, if you can believe that. And I love this. Instead of stairs, of course, the Floating Castle Space Station has transporters. And there's basically going to be treasure in every direction here, so let's find it all. Free house. And a silver helmet. That is obviously droppable. That's not even worth that much money. Uh, evil men are new. That is not a bad man. He is an evil man. And if you look at his spell list, it is frightening. So we're gonna make sure he dies. Use our items to drop lightning on everybody, and I'm sending both myself and Skittle at him just to make sure he doesn't get two turns. Because on his second turn, he has a chance to cast Nuke. And I don't want to get nuked. <laughs> no one does. So fortunately, he's down, but I do love his color palette. Black and purple is my whole, my whole color scheme for everything. But basically, you just want to prioritize him, make sure he dies and he doesn't cast nuke on you, and you're good to go. I am a crazy person. I already came in here. Okay. <laughs> 880 gil. And 13,000 gil. All right. Getting poisoned. Um, and something that I feel like I should mention is that I was kind of watching back some of the older videos of this series, and they look a little choppy. So I've tried to do some things to make it look a little bit better for you. So I hope it worked. I will say this. I'm really having fun doing this. Ooh, the adamant. Now, you'll remember, all the way back when we first met the dwarves, there was somebody, one of the dwarves, the smith, the blacksmith, said that he would make us a legendary sword if we could find adamant, and we just did, so we will definitely be interested in visiting him. But I definitely want to finish the floating castle first, so that's what we're gonna do. But, to finish my thought... Ooh. 
Ooh, Wilbo levels up. That's awesome. I think he will be able to cast level 8 magic now, which I would really enjoy. Um, but what I was saying was, I'm really having fun doing this, but... Recording video games is actually a lot more difficult than you would think. Ooh, the black shirt. Okay. So, uh, this is gonna go on Wilbo. I don't believe that it is going to be an actual upgrade, uh, absorb-wise, over the gold bracelet, but it does cast Ice 2 for free. So now Wilbo can cast every element, uh, level 2 for free. And that is awesome. And we are going to have to drop the, uh, gold bracelet, unfortunately, but it's just what we gotta do. And the white shirt. Now, this is an interesting choice, because the white shirt is going to be, uh, 10 absorb less than the opal bracelet, but it does cast Invis 2 for free. Now, you might be thinking, that doesn't really sound that good. I mean, Invis 2 is definitely a good spell, but Ted Absorb is kind of a big deal, and that's true. However, the way our endgame equipment is going to be set up is that by equipping the white shirt, instead of just hanging on to it to cast the spell, is actually going to only net us a 2 absorb loss, and I'll explain that when our uh, final equipment configuration comes into play. Um, and we need the space right now, so we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, despite the fact that Doc is going to lose a fairly significant amount of absorb doing this. And also, I mean, he looks like he's wearing a white shirt, so I want him to be wearing a white shirt. Anyway. To finish my thought, uh, a lot of time and energy goes into making these videos, so if you're enjoying what you see, please consider subscribing. Airs are not new. Oh, they are. Okay, yeah, I was thinking of uh, waters, but they are new. But I'm telling you, when something goes wrong with your recording. I don't want to bore you with the details of this too much, but today, for example, I sat down to record, and all of a sudden, the game was extremely choppy. And this is a Nintendo game. It is not a, de a graphically demanding game, so there's no real reasonable explanation for that. It just started happening. Why don't we try out our white shirt, just because? And try out our black shirt, just because. So those kinds of things uh, really make you want to jump out the window. Um, but I really like doing this, and I hope that people enjoy watching them. And I don't want to be one of those people that harps on it all the time, so all I will say is that I really appreciate it when people subscribe, so, you know, just give it a thought. If you don't want to, no harm, no foul, no worries. And I'm gonna shut up about that and get back to the game. Ooh, Skittle levels up. Yes! And me? Okay. We are getting really, really powerful at this point. Frankly, you could probably finish this game without ever casting a level 8 spell. In order to do that, you'd need, you know, a medium amount of skill and a large amount of luck, but it could be done, I'm fairly certain. So there's an opal shield, which we don't need. We already have better things. And there it is. Our third and final ribbon. We won't get a fourth, unfortunately. But how our armor uh, loadout is going to work is that Skittle resists ice, fire, lightning, poison, and death. And then is wearing a heal helmet. So because his dragon armor, in combination with his Aegis shield, uh, resists so many things... We're gonna go ahead and give me the third ribbon, and now we are very, very close to a final armor configuration. We're gonna go ahead and drop this heel helmet. As sad as that makes me, it's five total useful helmets, and you really just can't do better than the ribbon, despite the fact that it really lacks some absorb. Um, the resistance is just so, so good. Okay, already opened that. Let's keep going. There is one more treasure room, and then we are on to the next floor. But I am so stoked. 
We have both Doc and Wilbo's final piece of body armor, hand armor, and helms. So we are making really great progress. Opal Gauntlet, that can go, but I did want to find it. And we are just leaving a trail of drop treasure behind us. <laughs> Okay, so there are a number of different ways we can travel on this floor, obviously, but the first thing I'm noticing is that robot, so why don't we go talk to him? You can look out over the world from this window. Why don't we do that? Let's see what we can see. From this window, one can see the entire world. The four forces are flowing together into the center of the four altars, into the Temple of Fiends. What? <laughs> the Temple of Fiends? That is very, very interesting news. But we have a treasure room over to our right, so let's go ahead and raid that. But why don't we think about what that might mean while we're doing that? Uh, I think man cats are new. But this is a large group of enemies, so why don't we use our uh, damage items? Let's use the black shirt. Ice 2 is pretty good. Wow, they can cast fire too, huh? Okay. We definitely all resist that, but it is concerning that a number of them could cast fire two in a row. I would not enjoy that. Alright, Lit did not do very well on the man cats, so why don't we see how the black shirt does? Yeah, they've got some uh, reasonable magic defense, that is for sure. But now that we've managed to thin their ranks a little bit, I think I can switch back to using the heal staff. And we haven't tried fire yet, so what about that? I do like that Slow Reads lost intelligence when that is not what it does at all. <laughs> yeah, nothing, no, uh... No real elemental damage can be done to these guys, but that's okay. We're doing fine. Honestly, I'd probably rather have Fire 2 casted on me a bunch of times than anyone get poisoned, just for the fact that I don't have to visit the item screen or change my formation back. And what will we have in here? A million treasure boxes again. 8,000 gil. The Pro Cape. So this is what I was talking about. So, the Pro Cape offers 8 Absorb, and weirdly, it is a shield. Um, so, what ends up happening is, if I equip the white shirt and drop the Opal Bracelet, um, I lose 10 Absorb there, but I gain 8 Absorb by having an extra slot for Doc to be able to equip his shield. So, I really only lose 2 Absorb in the exchange, and I gain the ability to cast Invis 2 for free. So, that's kind of what I go with there. But uh, your mileage may vary on that. Um, you could kind of go either way, I think. Um, but this is what we're going to do. And now we have a decision to make. Do I want to drop anything? I really don't. That being said, this is a 100% playthrough, right? So, let me think about this for a second. Well... <laughs> you're not gonna believe this. 
Um, but what's in this treasure box is a cloth. And there is no piece of armor I would consider dropping for that. Literally everything we're holding is, like, a unique. So, despite the fact that this is a 100% playthrough and I do want to open every treasure box, there's just no way we can do that, right? But it is a cloth. I promise you that. So why don't we move on? It occurs to me that if I had planned this a little better, I could have grabbed that first and then dropped it to be able to show it, but you'll just have to take my word for it. And that's going to be true of something in here, I believe, as well. 5,400 gil. Ooh, wizard vampires. These are new. Um, but they are going to be no match for some light axe action and some mage staff action. Will, will, will they be a match for it? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> a heal potion. 9,000 gil. And this one here is going to be a pro ring. Um, so you'll have to take my word for it on that one, too. I really do wish that I had done this the other way so that we could see all that, but that's what it is and I'm certainly not going to be able to drop anything in my inventory. And over here we're going to have another treasure room, and below you'll be able to see the way out, but I do want to check out south of here real quick before we go. 4150 gil, a soft potion, always nice. 3400 gil, and the katana, oh yes. This is my second to final sword, but it is quite good. So let's go ahead and put that on. And that thing has some pretty serious stats. I'm pretty excited to be able to use it. And it is a sword that only ninjas can use. So if you don't have a ninja in your party, you literally have no use for it, which is pretty sweet. And I'm gonna be doing boatloads of damage from now on, which I'm going to really enjoy. So let's check out what's going on down here. Nothing. Just a bunch of empty uh, computer chairs, it looks like to me. But pretty neat nonetheless, I did want to show that. Just to kind of show that this used to be a place inhabited by people who used to use it for uh, whatever advanced scientific things they were doing at the time. And then there's just one more room that I want to show, right over here. Again, nothing, but just some computer banks. But I think it's pretty cool. They did say that their interest was the universe. Ooh, sentries are new. But I don't think one enemy is going to last very long. Unfortunately, but we do get a look at my katana. Uh, funnily enough, it looks like a little knife like that Wilbo used to use. <laughs> but it is a sweet weapon nonetheless. And it's the unique for me, so I gotta be using that for right now, right? Now let's take that transporter and get out of here. Get onto the next floor. Okay, so this is a very interesting floor, um, and I'm going to show you how it works rather than just talking about it. This is another one of those that the only explanation is that this is on the surface of some kind of sphere, which makes a lot more sense here in a space station than it does in the sunken shrine. But so if you just walk one direction, you will end up, you will end up back where you were. This is not the safest floor to be doing this on. <laughs> But we're going to do it anyway, because I think it's kind of cool. I 
And we get a nice view of outer space from here, which is great. And here we are back where we started, and just to prove it, I'm gonna walk out and back in. So let's go back up. Now, in order to find the stairs out of here, you would end up having to do a bunch of ex experimentation um, by walking one direction, ending up back at this, and so on, until you f figure it out. Um, but that is very, very hard to do. Fortunately, I already know where it is. <laughs> the other thing is, is that, uh... You, you end up in these random encounters, right? And some of them are pretty long. And so, it can end up just disorienting you on this floor, where you kind of forget where you were. Fortunately, with our heal staff, we're not ever going to end up in too much trouble, but it can definitely be a kind of floor where you can get lost, forget your position on the map, and have no idea... Ooh, Wilbo leveled up. That's nice. Uh, how to get out of here. And in fact, I even went one too far. <laughs> Ooh, Skittle leveled up. That's great. And me. And Doc. Okay. I'm into it. Now, if I did end up going past it, I'm just going to keep walking straight down. It is, in fact, on this column. Here we go. And here we are on the final floor and on a very long bridge. Now, this bridge is a very dangerous area. It is very unlikely we're going to find out why right now, though. So let's just get to it. Um, I'm gonna leave this in because this would be a reason why it would be very dangerous. <laughs> Five sorcerers, oh my god, run! Okay. But it is not the reason I was talking about. But we will end up seeing that a little bit later. The reason I am uh, coyly referring to right now. Let's just make sure we're all good to go. Boy, the encounter right here seems kind of high. But here we are. Tiamat's chamber. Now let's make sure we're all healed up. That looks good enough to me. Lightning erupts from the Fiend's Ball. So, you have come this far. I, Tiamat, the Fiend of the Wind, will now put an end to your adventure. And look at that, it's like a cool Hydra. Now, we are definitely leveled enough to take this on straight up, but we're gonna do something more fun, because Tiamat has a very interesting property. Tiamat is weak to poison, and you know what that means. We're going to go ahead and use our Bane Sword. And here's how we're going to do this. We are going to keep trying until this works. And we are going to cast Break, which is Poison Elemental Stone, but that will be a one-hit KO as well. And let's give it a try and see what happens. Didn't work. Okay. Bane Sword, how about it? Nope. All right. We're gonna keep trying. I'm actually glad I casted that fog on myself. Let's do a ruse. And let's use a uh, white shirt. Throw up invis, why not? And we will cast break again. Nope, okay.
Come on! <laughs> And those are actually going to stack, so we're just going to keep casting it. In fact, you know what? Let's just throw a Cure 2 down on myself. And let's cast a Heal 2. Make sure the party is good to go. All right, this is my last break, but I do still have five casts of Bane, so this is going to happen. I honestly feel like I'm getting pretty unlucky right now. Come on, break. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, what what to do now? Well, let's cast a cure on me. And we're just going to keep casting heal too until we run out because we're this is going to happen. But we do need to make sure we're keeping our heals up because we are Getting really unlucky with these? Oh, come on. <laughs> this is the only time in the game it's supposed to work. Oh, no. Running out of stuff to do with uh, Skittle. I may have to just end up attacking. I really don't want to do that, though. Yeah, we'll just cast it on me, I suppose. And we still have some heal threes left before we have to change tactics and... ...try and actually win. Come on, let's go, poison! Oh, <laughs> I feel like this is insanely unlucky. I don't know if I've ever tried to do this and had it miss this much. Oh my god. Alright, we're gonna keep going. I think we can afford a heal staff turn, maybe? You know what? Why? Why, though? This is unreal. You know, I just wanted to be cool, I wanted to win this fight really stylishly, and it's turning into such an unbelievable pain. Alright, I have nothing left to do with Skittle. So, let's just start using heal potions, I guess. Whoa, that was pretty damaging. There it is. Yes! <laughs> that is the only time you're ever going to see poison smoke. There are only two enemies in the game that are weak to poison. It's Tiamat and a red dragon. And I forgot to do the poison on the red dragon, so I just wasn't going to give up on this one. But it happened. We one-shotted a the uh, Fiend of the Air. So there it is. Let's get out of here. That ended up being so much harder than I thought it would be. Oh, man. Oh, sandworms. We haven't seen these before. These guys, uh, I believe, are the ones that cast Quake. So what I'm going to do is throw down an A-Rub. Because Skittle does not resist Earth. And there's no real need to burn a spell on him. But we're heading right back to town, so why hold back? Yeah, let's just do a lit three, I guess. Yeah. 
for 77 damage. Great. All right, down he goes. I'm glad we got to see one of those, because I think their design is really cool. And it's definitely one of those gotcha enemies where if you don't know what they're capable of, you can run into one of those. They just cast Quake and randomly KO everyone. Literally everyone. Well, we're going to go ahead and hit the inn and have a laugh at how we one-shotted a uh, fiend. And that's right, we have 313,000 gil. So, we are going to hang on to the defense because it does cast uh, Ruse and everything else we've got. So there's really nothing to do right now. But, I didn't mention this, check out our orbs, they are all lit up. And we heard that clue looking out over the world. Because you might be thinking right now, well, we've lit all the orbs, isn't that the end of the game? But it is not. There is more to do. And one of those things is going to be filling out the spell books. We've got to swing by the dwarf cave, and there is even more than that. But that is all going to have to wait until next time, because I'm all out of time for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.